I looked down the street towards the main road. Four estate agency notice boards adorned the immaculate lawns of houses in the close. There were two more in the other direction. Oh my God, this could hurt property prices, I thought. When the next two houses go up for sale, it's going to get even worse. My attention was drawn to the house three houses down the street on the opposite side of the road. Gary and Jessica Spencer live there. They are probably the youngest couple in the area. He is a financial consultant. She is a management consultant. I would call both yuppies, that is, young, easygoing professionals. Gary works from home, and Jess is often away on business. I noticed movement at the Spencer's. I took the binoculars and took a closer look. She opened the curtains in the bedroom. She looked good standing there in her bra and panties. She still had a great body for her age. She took her clothes, and I saw him walk across the room to the bathroom. And what did she see in him? I asked myself. He's not that big, and his body looks flabby. She stepped towards her skirt, then lifted her white blouse and put her hands through it. She was still buttoning her blouse as she left the room. Gary came out of the bathroom wearing only his boxers. I watched him fasten the belt on his jeans, not bothering to put on a shirt, and noticed the way his flabby manhood swayed as he followed her out of the room. So what now? I asked myself a question. They'll sit and chat over a glass of wine or maybe a cup of coffee, or maybe he'll get straight to the point. I waited another 15 minutes before there was any movement. The side gate opened and she came out. I couldn't see him, but she turned around and kissed someone. Walking down the road, she turned and waved at him before crossing the road. My wife was returning home. The sound of my boots echoed through the house as I ran down the stairs and out to take my place in the conservatory. The side gate opened, and I heard the click of her heels as she walked along the concrete path. She smiled as she opened the door, and I tried to catch the melody she hummed as she walked through the archway into the dining room. There are many houses for sale in this area. I wonder why? I saw her jump when I spoke. Her hand rose and lay on her rather large chest. She turned and saw me sitting in a rattan chair. Giles, what are you doing here? You almost gave me a heart attack. Well, I'm glad to see you too, my dear. You know what I mean. Of course, I'm glad to see you, but I didn't expect you to return for two more days. What did you just say? I asked if you knew why there are so many houses for sale in this area. I thought that you women were all bosom friends, and if anyone knew, it was you. Actually, I don't know. It's strange that I haven't seen any of the girls since we took Alex to Durham. I was supposed to meet Sally for coffee on Monday morning, but you insisted we stay the night and I missed it. Since then, we have not been able to meet. Well, last Monday I saw Sally and Eric in the pub. It seemed to me that there was some kind of tension between them. When Eric went to the toilet, Sally confessed to me. Apparently, old Eric had an affair four years ago and Sally just found out about it. They try to sort it out, but another woman lives nearby and Sally wants to be as far away from her as possible. I noticed the blood drain from her face when she heard my news. This happens a lot in my line of work. The person you are questioning thinks that you know nothing, but you imply that you know much more. Suddenly he loses his footing and his mind starts racing, trying to figure out how much you know. She froze for a while and then began twirling her hair with her fingers. Don't you think it's strange, Isabella, that Sally trusted me and not you, her best friend? She fidgeted again. Now that you're home... I'd better go cook dinner, unless you want to go out. She moved towards the refrigerator, paused, then came back to look at me again. Giles, what are you wearing? I stood up, pulled the top of the leather suit over my shoulders, put my arms through the sleeves, and twirled in front of her with my arms outstretched to the sides. Like? I thought the colors were particularly suitable. Red, white, and blue, queen and country and all that. It looks ridiculous. A man your age in a motorcycle uniform, and as for queen and country, it's been 12 years since you left the army and became... She racked her brains, trying to remember what her husband did all day. Security consultant, dear. I became a security consultant. That's how I make a living, and it's been a pretty good life, hasn't it? I remember you didn't need to tell me this. I just couldn't find the words. That's all. Yes, I think everything was not bad. We live here in the house and do not need anything. 
so I guess we can say that we live quite well. I exceeded my promise to your father, didn't I? He promised to keep you at the level to which you are accustomed. I think I did everything even better. But now that I'm retired, you might have to cut back a little. She dropped the oven plate she had taken out of the cabinet. When a ceramic dish hits a ceramic tile floor, none of it feels particularly good. Isabella, you actually need to be more careful. The dish is easy to replace, but who knows if we can get such a tile anywhere else. To hell with the tiles, you're standing here in motorcycle leather and saying you're retired. What kind of midlife crisis is this? When were you going to talk to me about this? Well, I didn't mean to, because I didn't think it concerned you. Just like you obviously thought your sex with Eric was none of my business. Now that blow actually hit home, she staggered and was forced to grab part of the kitchen island for support. Almost done. Now one more blow. Of course, you know that Tom and Helena are getting divorced. I have to say, it took me by surprise. When we moved here three years ago, they were like a young lover's dream. She almost whispered, and I had to ask her to repeat it. You don't know why? Sally didn't know for sure. All she could tell me was rumors, and you know how much I hate spreading rumors. She took a stool and sat down. What do the rumors say? Something about Tom having someone on his side, but I wouldn't worry about that. These are just rumors. Now she was very pale, and maybe I'll give it one more shot before she has to visit the restroom. You know, it got me thinking. With so many houses for sale at once, I wonder if there's some common connection. We know about two. Can you remember anything that connects the other two? Sorry, I need to go to the toilet. She stood up and ran to the downstairs toilet. It seemed like a good time to have some coffee. I turned on the coffee maker enjoying the aroma as it ground the beans and prepared the black liquid. I was still drinking my coffee when she came out of the restroom. The makeup was washed off, and she already looked her age. She still looked somewhat shocked, but had apparently decided that the best form of defense was attack. I thought you'd already changed out of that ridiculous costume. Why do I need this? Because soon I will need it again. So it also comes with a motorcycle? Oh, and not just any motorcycle but a Ducati Panigale, capable of speeds of over 160 miles per hour. Why do you need something like that? The general speed limit is 70. Oh, I got it. This is to compensate for your other little problem. I've heard that men buy powerful cars when they themselves can no longer accelerate. I couldn't stop laughing. As I already said, I'm retiring. I need something to replace the thrill of jumping out of a plane at an altitude of three kilometers. Come on, you're a damn consultant. Consultants don't jump out of planes. Well, it's all a matter of semantics. Some people prefer to call us mercenaries or soldiers of fortune. But I think a security consultant sounds much more euphonious. She sat back down, her mouth open in disbelief. Are you saying that you have been working as a mercenary for the last 12 years? Why didn't I know? Because you weren't interested. You didn't want to know. Do you really think that some office worker spends three or four months in African countries? I already told you that I work with governments. This means training, rebuilding their armies, and, yes, fighting. War has been privatized, my dear. Whenever the government wants to do the dirty work but doesn't want the return, it turns to people like me. Have you ever wondered how it was that the consultant suffered some of my injuries? You said it was an accident. That's how it was. You don't think I got them on purpose, do you? But you broke your leg in Cape Town. He returned home on crutches. It was... It was definitely broken. It just wasn't a car accident. Shrapnel wounds looked the same as the results of a compound fracture. I watched as she tried to absorb everything I told her. What she considered a comfortable little life. I've been married to a stranger for the last 20 years. Not really... For the first eight years, I was exactly who you thought I was. The question is, are you the woman I thought you were? Looks like no. Oh, that's how it is. You can't blame me for looking for comfort when I get nothing from you. I never held a grudge against you because of your problem. I never even raised this topic. I am only human. I have needs that you have not satisfied for a long time. Four years, three months, and 23 days. Since the day I left for Cape Town. An expression of disbelief appeared on her face, and I realized that she was trying to understand the situation. 
I can't believe you calculated everything to the day. Oh, I understand. This is one of your injuries. This was when you were in Cape Town, wasn't it? Yes, but the news hurt me much more than physically. Do you have any idea what it's like to recover from surgery in a distant country and be told that your wife is having sex with your neighbor at home? It is not true. Who could tell you that? But this is even worse. Our own daughter came home to pick up her iPad and found you having sex in the bedroom with Eric. The poor child was devastated, crying on the phone, begging me not to destroy the family. She stayed with my sister Jenny, who spent the whole night trying to calm her down. You have no idea how lucky you are that you were 8,000 miles away from me that night. Jenny called me the next day and asked what I was going to do. I said, I'll do what my little girl wants. I don't know exactly when I made the decision, but even before I left the hospital, I knew that I would never touch you again, not the way my husband does. She stood before me in silence. I could almost hear her gears turning, trying to put everything together. She realized that there was one piece of the puzzle missing, a piece that she was missing. Why now, Giles? Why are you telling me this now? As I already said, I am retiring. Well, I'm leaving the active part. I get a little slow, you know, to counteract the younger guys. It's time to tie up loose ends, and you, my dear, are one of them. No, don't, Giles, I'll stop. I only went to Eric because I was desperate. I haven't heard anything from you, but we can change. If you retire, we will see each other much more often. So, Gary is just picking up my scraps? Does this also apply to Tom, Greg, and James? Yes, sure. They were a replacement. I would have preferred you. But you weren't here, and when you were, you weren't interested. And it never occurred to you to ask why? I thought you had problems, and I didn't want to embarrass you by making you talk about it. How attentive you are, my dear. I will miss this. What do you mean you'll miss it? We can work things out. We'll go for a consultation. I don't understand how we'll do this when you're here and I'm in the south of France. You can't divorce me, Giles. This will ruin you. Oh, I don't think so, but you're right. I can't divorce you. Tell me, what do you remember about our wedding? She looked into my eyes, trying to read what was hidden behind them. We got married on the beach in Bali. That strange little man was babbling something in the language they speak there. Local residents put garlands of flowers around our necks. Everything was very romantic. And he gave us a certificate that none of us could read. He insisted on kissing me, and I giggled because his beard tickled me. Don't you remember the civil ceremony when we returned home? No, of course not. Why should we marry twice? That's what I told the finance guy when they refused to add your name to my pension. I just returned from Hellman, and they asked me to take care of some things. For God's sake, Giles, get down to business. The thing is, my dear, that we were supposed to have a civil ceremony here. This certificate is not worth the paper it is written on. I have to admit my first thought was to talk to you and sort things out. Then I heard rumors about what you were doing with the young subaltern while I was in that hole. I put it all on the back burner and kind of forgot about it. It appears that, legally speaking, we were never married. You're right. I can't divorce you. I do not trust you. This is all just a bluff. You can't just leave. Take this to the lawyer. I'm sure he'll say that's exactly what I can do. Isabella was distracted by a noise outside and hurried to the window to look. There's a man hammering something into our lawn. A. This is for the advice of real estate agents. I called there on the way here when I was putting the house up for sale. I don't need him anymore. But what about me? What about Alex? I wouldn't worry about Alex. She plans to spend the holidays with her father. I'll do my best to get her to come to you, but you two haven't been close for years, have you? No. I won't let you get away with answering. I'll contact a lawyer. There must be something I can do. I gave you the best 20 years of my life, and I should have the right to at least something. Let's. You can try to get what Americans call palimony, alimony to a cohabitant in an unregistered marriage, but I'm not sure there is such a precedent here. You can demand payment for being a nanny and housekeeper, but when the court sees how much you spend every month on clothes and jewelry, it may decide that you owe me. She sank back into the chair, 
resting her head in her hands. I do not believe in this. This is not happening to me. Do you hate me that much? Hate you? Why should I hate you? You are my daughter's mother. I can't hate you. In any case, I can manage without you. This caught her attention. She raised her head and looked into my eyes. Do you mean that for the last four years you... Of course, a soldier always knows where to get sex, although I must admit that recently things haven't been quite like that. So, you have someone else and you have the audacity to criticize me? Yes, it's unfair of me, isn't it? Especially because it was you who brought us together. Sometimes you really are too kind to me. I watched her trying to comprehend the events of that day. She stretched her legs out in front of her, wrapping her arms around them. She swayed slightly and sometimes shuddered. It seems that although your sensitivity prevented you from talking about my little problem with me, it didn't stop you from talking about it with your girlfriends. Jessica was especially sympathetic. She suggested that I contact various people who she thought could help me. I said that I had no problems, but of course, I could not expect her to take my word for it. I had to demonstrate to her, and the demonstration was real. You know, she's actually very athletic. Are you with Jessica? Now I understand that you are joking. You're almost twice her age. What could a woman like her see in someone like you? I could ask the same thing about you and Gary, since he still seems to find something attractive in you at least twice a week. Perhaps I should have apologized for this question. It's a little below the belt. She really had no idea that I knew about it. The hammering outside had stopped, and the man from the real estate agency had driven a stake into the ground and was attaching a for-sale notice to it. The sound of hammering gave way to a lower rumble. Looks like this is my motorcycle, I said, picking up my helmet and walking towards the front door. Outside, a motorcycle stopped in the driveway. The thin but well-built rider dismounted, throwing her beautifully contoured leg over the seat. As she lifted her helmet, a shock of red hair fell over her shoulders. Terrible beast, I understand why he excites you so much. I think I should be envied. When it comes to a thrilling ride, my dear, nothing compares to you. She smiled and bit her lower lip lightly. We are very good together, aren't we? Of course. Now our work here is almost finished. It's time to move on to the finale. The real estate man finished with my board and began driving stakes into the Spencer's lawn. I didn't notice my wife follow me out, but Jessica saw her and leaned to the side to look past me. Oh, hi, Isabella. Could you do me a favor? Gary isn't feeling well. You'll look after him for me, won't you? Isabella seemed speechless, so Jessica answered for her. Of course you'll look. Why not? You've been doing this for so long that you hardly notice the difference. I put on my helmet and started the engine. Jess hopped in behind me, and we drove the short distance to the Spencer house. Gary was arguing with the guy setting up the notice board. He was caught off guard when a motorcycle pulled into the driveway. He was even more surprised when his wife jumped out of the back seat. Be nice, Gary, and let the man do his job. But I don't understand what's going on. Perhaps this will help, she said, taking an envelope from her leather jacket. This is a letter from my lawyer in which I inform you that I am filing for divorce. You don't have to sell the house. You can always buy it from me. But I don't think you have the money for that. Gary stood and looked at her with his mouth open. Don't worry, dear. Isabella promised to look after you, so you're unlikely to notice that I'm gone. Now be a good boy. Go back into the house and let the man do his job. He didn't even open the envelope. He simply turned and slowly walked back to the side gate. Jess zipped up her suit, put on her helmet, and climbed in behind me. We had barely left the gate when a voice came over the helmet intercom. How long does it take to get to Portsmouth? About an hour. I'm not sure my ass can handle sitting for that long. Don't worry. If your butt hurts, I'll massage it all the way to France. How long does it take to sail there? About seven o'clock. What will we do with ourselves during this time? I booked a cabin. I felt a slap on my shoulder. You are a very naughty boy, and I love you. 
When I felt her arms wrap around my waist and her body press against my back, I knew this day was worth waiting for. He went on long business trips. She had no idea that for many years he had been a mercenary and military consultant for his government in other countries. In his absence, she slept with many of her neighbors. Their daughter told him about her betrayal, their wedding was in Bali, and he learned that if they didn't have a civil ceremony in their country, then they weren't actually husband and wife. He retired. I put their house up for sale. He left her without anything, because in fact, she was a stranger to him. He went to live in Paris with the wife of the man who was her last lover. Before leaving, this girl brought her unfaithful husband a divorce envelope, and she also put the house up for sale. 4-5 Her infidelities were countless, but as it turned out, from a legal point of view, there were no infidelities. Thanks for hanging out and listening. If you like the story, hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. Make sure to check out our other wild tales right here on the end screen. Catch you in the next story.